Hello, welcome to day 10 of Vlogmas. We're still repeating jumpers because I need to get the rest of them out the drawer. I'm a week into December and I'm just repeating Christmas jumpers when I very much don't need to. Uh, today I am going to be flashing my stash. Sweater quantities specifically. Last year, last Vlogmas, I made grand plans to knit my stash. I have not done this. There's been some additions. There have been some additions to the stash, which isn't ideal, um, but it is what has happened. So, yes, I'm not judging myself too harshly about that because I'm sure other people have also had additions to the stash, but the plan really was to stash down this year. And I was doing really well for a chunk of time, and then I wasn't. But what I think I'm going to do, as I'm going to go through this, is things that I'm not 100% sure about, I'm going to set aside, come back to it later, and then maybe have a de-stash in the new year. Just keep an eye out for that. If you see anything that you like that I set aside, there's going to be potential, potential de-stash. So, um, before I get into that, Shall we start with advents? Shall we do advents first? Mix it up a little bit. I washed my hair today so it's looking particularly puffy. Because I just wash it and leave it and don't blow dry it or straighten it or anything. And so it just does this. Anyway, it's probably curly. I just don't know. So I have got four advent calendars this year. I have my own hand dyed yarn, chromatic yarns. This year's advent was inspired by spells from Dungeons and Dragons. It's called the Book of Spells. I've already planned next year's theme. It's Muppet's Christmas Carol. And <laughs> I'm already thinking about it. Um, yes, um, it's all on my sturdy sock base, which is 75% Blue Face Lester Superwash and 25% Nylon. I also did a swap with Alison of Lofty Loops. Uh, I sent her one of my advents and she sent me hers back. This year her advent is watercolour themed. And I did the same with Selena, did a swippy swap. Ooh, birdies. And uh, her theme, that Selena threw the wardrobe yarn co, I got distracted by the birdies. Kimchi, my cat, is also up here, bird watching out the window. Uh, her advent theme is Nutcracker, delightful. And then I also have a Bird and Blend tea advent calendar, that one I bought with my own money. And I repainted my nails this morning, and I didn't do a very neat job. They're all smushed at the end and whatever. Also it's a very dark colour and even though I did two coats of the base coat I'm worried it's going to stain my nails yellow so we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Let's start with the chromatic yarns advent shall we? Day 10. This is day 10. This is Summon Demon. Uh, so it is a pinky red colour. It's got some like raspberry coloured speckles in it. It fades quite nicely from the day before. I think this is a really pretty colour. Summon Demon pretty much is how it sounds. You summon a demon to help fight with you. Uh, and if you don't roll well, sometimes they fight against you. It's a bit of a risky spell, but a fun one. Next up, we'll do through the Wardrobe Yarn Co. Day 10. Uh, an even number means today is Suri. Can't believe I'm already in double figures. I'm already halfway through almost. Almost halfway through Vlogmas. I need to get serious about Christmas presents. I'm so behind. Oh, this is so pretty. Oh, Selena, this one is stunning. This goes very, very nicely with yesterday's sock mini. Absolutely gorgeous. Yes, I'm excited to cast on the cowl. I think I might cake it all up and take it down um, and hopefully free up my needles. Take it down when I go visit my parents in January. Uh, I don't know if it will probably be able to come on a plane with us because maybe the needles will be too chunky. But maybe I'll take a, something crochet for on the plane um, for after. And then that's 18. You know when I said, you know when I said I need to transfer this to another bag? I have not done that. 10. This is Midnight Sky. I'm anticipating what colour it's going to be, but the Cozy Cocoa didn't look anything like I thought. I think that was day eight. Didn't look anything like I thought it was going to. So 
yeah midnight sky doesn't look like I thought it would either it's a very soft pastel uh, blue almost a periwinkle and then it's got some speckles of uh, pinky purple in it as well and some pink up here and it's absolutely stunning it's really pretty I'm so behind on watching Alison's vlogmas I try not to um, it's difficult because I like supporting my friends and I, I like watching their videos but I do find it difficult to watch other people's vlogmas content because um, I instantly start comparing and I fall into the comparison game which isn't necessarily something I want to do but it is something I sometimes end up doing so uh, yeah I get behind on watching people's vlogmas maybe I'll watch it in January instead bird and blend uh, because yeah I don't know why I compare so much or why I get into the it's not habit but I don't know I don't know why I end up comparing myself with people because I shouldn't. I don't want to smush my nail varnish. I did. I just smushed it anyway. Ooh! Right, this is a two, this is a two for Mario. It's a Ruiboss. I'm not a massive Ruiboss fan. Too inspired by your favourite Irish coffee Christmas tipple. And this is called Irish Cream. So I'm imagining it's inspired by Bailey's, which is my go-to beverage. Uh, at Christmas time, I have a Bailey's semi frequently over Christmas, not that frequently, but like medium frequency. Uh, I do have one when I get home from midnight mass. Uh, it's you know the wee hours of the morning, and I sit. It's a tradition that we used to do with my I used to do with my parents when we went to midnight mass, and last year I did it by myself because I went to midnight mass by myself. Um, I sat, I had my little Bailey's once I got back to see in the Christmas which was actually quite nice, I quite enjoyed it. But um, yeah, maybe I'll try it. it. Looks like it's got cocoa shells in, it's got coffee beans in there. And it's a Ruiboss tea, so it'll be caffeine free. Although the, I don't know if the, caf if the coffee beans would add anything. They're not ground up, so I don't know if they'd add any caffeine to that or not. I don't know. Shall we go through sweater quantity stash? Shall we do that? I was going to say, oh, would you prefer the other stash first? But we'll do the other stash another day. I'll do sweater quantities now. Um, and then maybe we'll chat sweater plans. First up, we have these four skeins. This, this is chromatic yarns. This is my own yarn that I have dyed. This is the man with the fat purple hand, which I actually named man with the big purple hand because I misnamed it accidentally. Uh, this is inspired by Scanlon Short Holt from The Legends of Vux Machina. I love this colourway. I think it's so good. I'm definitely going to be dyeing it up in the new year. Uh, this is it on my Yak Sock base. And to go along with that, I dyed up these two, which look almost black, but they're a very, very dark aubergine colour. Aubergine is a dark purple, I suppose, um, which I think I called something like summon spawn or something I can't fully remember but I didn't write the recipe down for it and I remembered it for some colorways but I think maybe I haven't I can't remember if I remember it or not <laughs> it was a whole lot of dye that's all I remember it took ages for it to exhaust but I'm going to be using these together in a jumper I really want to make an elf mail um, especially after seeing cat Cat Weaver, I saw hers in person and I was like, well, I really, really, really want to make one now. But I was talking about this in Monday's video over on Patreon. So it's to take me so long to make. I end up being a different size by the time I finish them. So I, ju I just need to get a wiggle on, get a wriggle on with my knitting. Um, so if you watched last year's sweater quantity stash video, a lot of the yarn will be the same, but we do have some additions. This is an addition but I am going to show everything again because it's still in my spe my sweater stash and you might notice that there is some yarn that isn't there because I have actually knit one and a bit jumpers this year next up we've got some through the wardrobe yarn co I bought this from her Grishaverse collection Grishaverse I don't know I'm not familiar with the tv series or the book I haven't watched or read either of them but I absolutely loved the dark gothic colors that Selena did 
and so shopped with her for this collection. This beautiful purple colour is called Without Armour. This is on her Romanticy sock base, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and is super soft and squishy. And is a gorgeous, like, Cadbury purple. Uh, that's how I would describe it anyway. As you can tell, I like purples. I like purples. Uh, it doesn't currently go with my hair colour, but, you know, that's also fine. Along with that, I bought three skeins of Make Me Your Villain, also on Romanticy Sock, which is like a blue steel colour. For more information about any of the dyes that I'm talking about, I'll be sure to link them in the description box below if you're interested. But yeah, this was from a collection that she did this year. So the plan is to use these together in colour work. I'm a bit worried the contrast isn't going to be enough because putting it in black and white it's not but at the same time maybe subtle will be nice but in like an unwind knitwear combo sweater jumper pattern I've got a few saved on Ravelry that I really really like um, so yeah maybe that would be nice with obviously the dark blue ish greyish blackish colour being the uh, main colour than this being the contrast colour work, but I got two of each just in case I wasn't sure what I wanted to make I wanted options and options is what I have now because I haven't knit anything colour work in quite a long time now so I feel like I kind of want to bring that back into my repertoire next up from the same collection therefore the same dyer we have uh, No Mourners No Funerals this is on her Dystopian DK this is 100% superwash merino. This is a greyish black with some like terracotta colour, a bit of purple running through. There's a bit of like a greenish yellow, a bit of dark purple in there as well. There's loads of different colours in this. I love it. I love it. So I've got four of them on DK, obviously for making a jumper. So the plan for this is to dye up some charcoal coloured mohair. Uh, or suri, but I'm worried that the suri will cover up all of the beautiful different colours in this. So I'm going to dye up, I think, mohair and make myself a trilogy sweater, which is a jumper that I have knit before. If you've watched my channel, it the jumper that it is, is I've knit it out of my own yarn. It's a cream and then it's got sort of warmish tone speckles on it. But yeah, that is what these will become because I love it and I think it's a jumper that I would wear a lot a lot a lot because I already wear my other trilogy jumper a lot so it just makes sense next up I did a swap last or not a swap I did we did Secret Santa last year in an indie dye group that I'm in and um, the crafty bird who is Robin sent me my be that beautiful mug that I've used before and I was actually going to make a cup of tea to drink whilst doing this and then lost track of time because I needed to put makeup on uh, but she sent me these three skeins which are a fade uh, none of these aren't named uh, these are all 100% superwash merino cozy four ply so I don't know I've put it in my sweater quantity because it's three skeins so I could make a so faded and I could dye up or I could dye up like a pink mohair or sorry and fade it myself um, or I could make a shawl with it or make sort of standalone things so make something with this one and what have you but I've just got it in my sweater quantity section because I'm not entirely sure but there's such beautiful colourways this one in particular is so stunning Robin is so good at delicate speckles um, I've never knit with Robin's yarn before. I've bought her pom-poms before, but I haven't knit with her yarn before, so I'm very curious how this goes. But I'm pretty sure the fade goes this way. I think that makes the most sense. But, yeah, it's a three-colour fade, but I don't know what to make with it, whether it's going to be a shawl or what have you. Because I could even just use these two as a two-colour shawl and then have this as something standalone or... I don't know. There's there's options out there. There's options out there. So next up, I bought some yarn from Chloe of Woolen Works. You know, before she became a little bit uh, super viral um, with her Barbie collection, and essentially sold more yarn than I probably have done all year 
in the span of two weeks. <laughs> I'm glad I snuck in there with this one. This is Fairy Bread. I had my eye on this one for a very, very, very long time. This is on her 100% Superwash Merino base, which is 400 meters per 100 grams. And it is an undyed yarn with absolutely stunning, colorful speckles on. I love undyed yarn with speckles. That is something that I very much enjoy. And um, I think it knits up really beautifully. The plan for this was to hold it with some undyed mohair or surrey or probably mohair and make something fuzzy out of it but also I'm tempted just to make like um, a tea for the summer because it's 100% superwash merino it shouldn't be too too warm and yeah I could just make a little tea with it a little t-shirt but because it's quite summery colours that could also work so I've got a few options out there um, the other plan was to make a so faded sweater but not fade it at all and just use the three skeins um, to make it like a crop sleeve. I mean, in all fairness, when I bought these, I probably could have made a sweater out of three. But now, now I've been eating Christmas food. <laughs> Next up, we have the yarn that I bought from Canada. This was, we went to Toronto on our honeymoon and I would move there in a heartbeat if it was a little bit closer. Um, and af actually affordable, but it's not. Um, well, affordable is not affordable to me anyway. And I, fr from what I understand, not affordable to many people who want to live in Toronto. Anyway, um, but we went to a beautiful yarn shop and I bought these three to be knit into a jumper. Uh, this is by Riverside Studio, which is, um, they are based in Quebec. And this colorway is Corrosion. This is on their uh, Superwash Merino Nylon Sock. 113 grams, which is four ounces per, wait, 384 meters per 113 grams, so 420 yards per four ounces. So it's 80% nylon, 20% sock. Sorry, the label is written in a different way to how I'm used to reading them. And plus it's in both French and in English, uh, which is fine because I can vaguely understand French. I mean, I have a degree in it, but I haven't spoken it in so, so long. But yes, this is a beautiful grey colour with some rusty speckles on. And I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. I love this colour. The plan was, or it was mentioned to me last year, that the plan could be to hold it together with this Kid Silk Haze that I have. Uh, I will need to buy some more of it in the pearl colorway because it goes, it does go quite nicely. Um, because this was the yarn that I used to knit my wedding shawl. And so it would be my wedding shawl yarn with my honeymoon yarn. And that would be very cute. Wouldn't that be cute? So that's a potential, but I would need to buy more of this. Um, obviously and alternate it because I think I've got two full balls and this and it's 25 gram balls so it's 210 so I've got 420 meters which will go with one of these um, and then just this little this little bit as well but that's actually it's a really cute idea so I might do that and hold them together so fuzzy, so fuzzy although now it's four years ago it will probably be a different dye lot if I were to buy more now Maybe I'll have a look when I turn the camera off. Next up, we've got more Through the Wardrobe Yarn Co. I'm going to sound like such the biggest Through the Wardrobe Yarn Co. fan. And it's not that I'm not her fan, because I am. I bought these three of Dreamy of Candy Unicorns, which was one of her most popular colourways up until recently, I think. I don't know. This is a really, really popular colourway of hers, and I can fully see why. It is absolutely beautiful. Pastels. I'm getting blown out to Bilio. Um... It's got pastel blues and yellows and pinks and a bit of purple in there as well. And this is on her 100% Superwash Merino base, which is called Superwash Merino in this, but I think it's got a different name now. I can't remember what it is. But um, she occasionally brings this back for like special, um, like one-off dyeing things, because it got to the point where, I imagine, I don't know, but it probably got to the point where she was sick of dyeing it. Um, non-stop so every so often it comes back so 
One of the times it did come back, I grabbed three skeins on mohair as well. This is the same colourway on Magical Mohair, which is 72% mohair, 28% silk, 420 metres per 50 grams. Because I was just going to hold it with undyed, but I was worried it would tone it down too much. So the mohair is much more, um, much more subtle, because mohair doesn't pick up colour as strongly as 100% Suporsche Merino. Uh, and it's much more bluey pink than, not bluey pink, purpley pink, sorry, than these skeins, because um, the yellow isn't going to show as much because that is the nature of mohair, but it's still, still a beautiful colourway. Um, the plan, I said it was to make a whit more sweater, but actually it's not fully size inclusive, which really sucks. Where's my phone? So I can actually look up the pattern that I was talk talking to Selena about making. Um, it's called like the Astria, As it's not called Astria. Selena is currently knitting one, so I've asked her what the jumper pattern is called, and then I will let you know <laughs> what the pattern is called. Because, uh, yeah, that is what I'm thinking of making out of this. And the plan was to start it last month, and maybe have it by Christmas. As you can see, that's going really well. But, um, yeah. Oops. So the final sweater quantity that I have at the moment, because I have ordered two sweater quantities from Jess of Skein in the Stitch from her latest collection uh, which was like um, Sarah J Mass themed but I obviously don't, I don't, not obviously, I haven't read any of those books so I don't get those references either. I just really liked the colourways um, and she dyed up on my sturdy sock base which I really really, I sent her a couple of skeins and she dyed it up to me and shipped it back super fast so I really really appreciate it. Two skeins of um, the, the dark black colourway that I can't think what it's called uh, on my sturdy sock base because she doesn't dye that base um, so I could use it with my advent because I'm going to make this pattern with my advent and um, yeah I just obviously haven't started it yet and she sent it back so quickly so I do have mild guilt but I already have a sweater on the go so I don't want to have too many jumpers on the go because otherwise well, I don't have the needles for it truth be told that's why I don't buy too many needles so I actually have to finish things because if I had too many needles then nothing would ever get finished. So this is my final sweater quantity. This is uh, Skein Queen, Skein Queen, I say Skein Queen, um, which this is on their Slinky Twist base, which is 80% Suposh Merino, 20% Silk, uh, 365 meters per 100 grams. I got this from Caroline of Dundonit. I miss her videos, I know you all do too. Um, I message her periodically. Um, yeah, she's still alive and well. But, um, yeah, she gifted me these when we went to Unravel in 2019. And I'm so, so grateful. Um, she bought them back when they were £20. And this has silk in, so I doubt they're still £20. This is in the Violet Gin colourway. I'm going to say Violet Gin. I'll pop it, hold it up this way because it just makes more sense in my brain. So it's a, just a very light lilac colour with some speckles through and she gifted me that along with this fluv base which back would then would have been 18 pounds so it definitely cost more now uh, which is the 72 percent kid mohair 28 percent silk in vintage lilac because she was trying to find her perfect colors for a no frills and i wanted to make a no frills as well um i now i'm looking for an alternative to a no frills that um is designed by someone who wants to include everyone or who wants everyone to knit their patterns not just up to a 50 something inch bust so um, yeah just a basic raglan but this is vintage lilac and it goes so nicely with this I was going to make a soiree sweater with it but I don't know whether just to make a basic raglan with it instead options but the soiree sweater is really really nice but yeah those are all of my sweater quantities that I have. Too many. It's too, too many. So, <laughs> this is the problem. Now I'm not knitting shawls as much. I'm not buying single skeins as often. Uh, when I buy yarn, I buy three of them because then I can knit a jumper if I want to. <sighs> and then I don't knit the jumpers. So then it just sits. <laughs> it sits on the stash. Oh my goodness, that's fine. It's part of being a knitter. Part of being a knitter and crocheter is collecting yarn, isn't it, really? Let's be honest. Anyway, 
I hope you enjoyed this video. How is your stash looking in comparison to mine? Does it make you? Does this make you feel a bit better about yourself? Let's count the sweater quantities. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven potentially eight. It's seven minus these, but there's a there's a potential for eight sweater quantities that I have. Um, plus one on the needles right now, plus two more. Oh, plus um, my advent calendar, which is technically a sweater quantity because I'm going to make a sweater out of it. Yeah, that's a lot of yarn. I'm going to put this back now and start to question my life choices. I really want to knit with this one soon. I need to. It's been on my shelf for too long. Too, too long. Maybe this will be my next, my next big cast on. We'll see. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and we'd, you would like to see more, blah, 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 um, it would be lovely if you were to subscribe. There is no pressure to if you don't want to. If you don't want to, that's absolutely fine. Tomorrow's video will be up on Patreon as all Mondays um, are. Most Monday videos will be up on Patreon. So uh, yeah, I've just had to rearrange my legs because my hips I'm starting to get sore sitting cross-legged for that long. Is this getting old? I think so. I probably need to do some kind of yoga. Um, if you would like to follow me on social media, links can all be found in the description box below. Feel free to subscribe. I'm posting every day in the run-up to Christmas. If you want to make sure you do see all of the videos, uh, turn notifications on. And also, um, if you want to see, make sure you do see all of, all of them, every single one, I'm posting twice a week just to the Biscuit Brew Crew over on Patreon. And then five days a week we'll be here on YouTube. So... That is entirely up to you. Do you have any sweater? Do you have any sweaters on the go at the moment? Do you have any sweater plans? What patterns are you looking at? What patterns do you want to cast on? I'm very curious. I love discovering new patterns, so please let me know. And uh, yeah, with all that being said, thank you so so much for watching. I just double checked that Selena hasn't messaged me back yet. She hasn't. It's fine. I'll pop it in while editing. Thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so, so much for being here. I hope that you have had a wonderful weekend and that you have a fantastic week next week. And uh, yeah, thank you for being amazing. Thank you for being you. Thank you for being here. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.